When software developers and designers build a new app, they have to have this ballet of making sure that they build enough powerful features without overwhelming the user. And Adobe Lightroom is no different. There are actually a bunch of really cool and powerful tools, but they're a bit hidden. This video, I'm gonna show you some of my favorite ones. What's going on everyone? Brian Matias here. So a few weeks ago, I shared a video of some of my favorite hidden tools in Adobe Lightroom Classic CC, and it got a really good response. And that got me thinking, there are actually a bunch of hidden tools, hidden features in Adobe Lightroom mobile on iOS. So I thought, let's create a video on that. Now here's a few things. One, I don't have Android, I only have iOS devices. So this video is pretty much for the iPhone and the iPad crowd. Sorry, Android guys, I would love to see a, an Android version. So if there's anyone who wants to create one, share the video link with me and I'll share it with people in a future video. Now there are, for the most part, these tricks are for both the iPhone and the iPad, but there are two in particular that are iPad only. I'm gonna list, you know, put a little label saying this is iPad only. So just so you know that. And so with that, I've got my iPad Pro right here and I'm working off of uh, the latest version of Lightroom Mobile that's in the App Store. The first trick or the first kind of hidden thing that I wanna share with you has nothing to do with in the app itself, but it is one of the most powerful features of Lightroom. And that is getting quick access to the camera to shoot photos in DNG format or Adobe's digital negative, AKA raw format. So. If I go to the home screen here and I swipe to the right, you'll see here, this is kind of my widget area. Now I have my little shortcuts widget, but if I click on edit and then I scroll down to Lightroom Mobile and I add that, I'm gonna bring that to the top here and click done. And you can see now I have camera, selfie and last photo. The selfie is fine and the last photo is fine, but really what I care about is camera. And what that does is it automatically opens up the camera mode in Lightroom. And the reason why that's important is because unlike the stock camera that Apple builds, for some reason, they don't support the ability to shoot in RAW or DNG. Lightroom does. So you can see here on the left, if I tap, um, there's a little file format and you can click on the little question for the tooltip, and it tells you ex exactly what DNG is. And in my opinion, when you're shooting mobile, you want as much of that information that's captured by the camera sensor in your iPad or your iPhone as possible. If you're shooting JPEG, then your image is already being compressed and processed. But if you have the DNG file, you have effectively that raw file and it gives you a lot more latitude to work on photos, especially when you hit the lower light scenarios. So here you can switch between JPEG and DNG. I always keep it on DNG. One thing to note though, is that if you are in the selfie mode, that is JPEG only. So unfortunately, uh, for some reason, the uh, the selfie camera doesn't support shooting in DNG, which is a bummer. So the rear camera though, which arguably is the one where you're typically, you know, composing your photo, that one is where you'll want to shoot DNG. So again, that first tip, the reason why this is nice is because if you're on your phone and you want quick access, all you have to do is swipe to the left from the lock screen or from the home screen and tap on that button and it'll bring you right in. One thing to note, if you're on the lock screen and the phone is locked, you have to unlock the phone. So either you have to use your touch ID if you have an iPhone with a fingerprint sensor, or you have to look at your phone and unlock it with face ID. So just a quick thing, but it is something, you know, it saves time. All right, moving on to tip number two here. So I've got this photo, uh, we're in Lightroom's kind of develop module. And you can see here that nothing really special. You can tap to see it full screen, uh, tap again to get the tools on the right. But for me, when I'm editing a photo, I often, I mean, you'd be surprised, maybe you wouldn't, but I often will edit my photos on my iPad or my iPhone and share them. In fact, probably the, the last bunch of photos that I have on my Instagram profile were edited on my iPad or my iPhone and not on my computer. So for me, I like to share the EXIF information, you know, what camera I used, what lens I used and that kind of stuff. You might not notice, but if you double tap on the screen, it'll actually bring up this little uh, display on the top left and it'll show you some information, but you can keep tapping on it and cycle through different pieces of information like the date and the copyright, uh, the resolution. And uh, again, 
here, this screen shows me the camera, which was an uh, A7R Mark III and a 12 to 24 millimeter lens. If you double tap again, it brings up the histogram. So the histogram is one of those things when you're editing, I mean, I don't know how someone doesn't have a histogram displayed when they're editing. So having that up here is really nice um, just because it shows you if you are gonna be blowing out your highlights or clipping your shadows, it just shows you the tonal range of your photo. So again, double tapping uh, will hide everything and then you can double tap to cycle, tap on the actual uh, information on the top left to cycle through that, and then double tap one more time for histogram. The third option is something for me, I give so much credit to Adobe. Uh, I wish more developers would do this. And actually I would love it if Adobe brought this feature over to uh, Lightroom CC on the desktop and not just Lightroom CC, but also Lightroom Classic CC. I am I'm ambidextrous in terms of I, I write with my left hand, that's kind of my dominant hand, but I, I kind of still throw with my right hand, you know, if I swing a, a tennis racket with my right hand. Um, but for the most part, I have a lot more control when I'm using my Wacom pen, I'm using my left hand. In Lightroom, and this is an iPad only feature, this is not uh, iPhone. If you go to the settings, and then you go to gesture shortcuts, there is a toggle called left-handed editing. So before I do that, just notice how the controls here, they're on the right uh, of the screen, all of the different panels. So if I go to settings, gesture shortcuts and turn on left-handed editing, and I go into the grid view and then back into the window for the editing, you can see that the controls are now on the left side, which for me is really appreciated because again, I, have, I'm, I feel a lot more precise when I'm editing with my left hand. So Adobe, thank you for that developers who are watching. Remember that there is a significant portion of left-handed users out there, at least give the option of being able to swap the controls. Uh, so especially when you're working on a display that has touch capabilities. All right, now let's move on to the second of the two iPad only features. Let's say here, I wanna crop. So I'll go to the crop mode and okay, I have the crop here, but what if I really wanna make a fine crop? You can see that, you know, about, a quarter of the display is taken up by the tool well. Here, if I tap, it actually brings the crop mode to full screen. So I can go here and do my crop and reposition it or rotate if I want. And then when I'm done with that crop, I just tap again and click done. And that crop is committed. Again, it's just one of those little things that uh, if you don't experiment, you never would know. And you'd just be cropping with a significant chunk of the display being used. For me, if I'm doing some crops, especially on a smaller display, uh, and again, this is I, the iPad only, um, it's nice to have as much of the screen taken up as possible, and I have control over the crop box. And so it's just one of those things that I, I appreciate a lot. So this next hidden feature, this is something that you might know about, you might not, but for the longest time, I was begging Adobe to incorporate this particular change. So let's go to the grid view and I'm gonna go to a photo that I edited heavily. Whenever I edit a photo, especially when I'm close to being done with it, I like to compare the original to the fully edited version. Now you can always do that if you tap and hold on the screen, you can see and cycle between the original and the fully edited. Now. Up until a few versions ago, this would only show you the original state from when you edited in the Lightroom mobile app. So let's say you were working on the photo on Lightroom CC on the desktop, and then you did something on Lightroom mobile, for example, or in classic, it would only show you the changes you made when you started editing here on your device. Now, as long as you're syncing that information to the Adobe Creative Cloud, you'll see the original preview. So for me, this is great. I mean, you can see just how much of a difference if we go back to the photo that we were working on here. I mean, it's nice to be able to show that. One of the things I like to do on Instagram in my stories is show the original and the final version. This allows me to get to my original version no matter where I am on any device that has Lightroom mobile installed. So that's kind of cool. All right, let's get into some really fun stuff now. So uh, in Lightroom Classic and in Lightroom CC for the desktop, I've showed you that if you were, for instance, wanting to fix tone, let's say you have your highlights blown out, you can visualize the areas of the photo that are blown out by pressing and holding on the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC while dragging on the highlight slider or the white slider. It'll show you kind of a mask view. You might not have known that actually that is here on mobile. So check this out. Let's go to light over here and we have the highlight slider. 
So normally, you know, I can see here, I have my histogram and it's showing me the that I'm starting to blow out my highlights, but I don't really have any other view. Check this out. If you press and hold on the highlight slider and start moving, and then with your other hand, press and hold on the screen, and as I start dragging, you'll start to see that mask. So it's starting to show you where you're blowing out your highlights. So that's really awesome. Same thing with the shadows. So if I, and here's, it's important, the order of this. First, you have to put your finger on the slider. You can start moving. And then with your other hand and your other finger, press and hold. And you can see that preview. So here, this is where I'm starting to clip my shadows. And so what I want to do is bring that out until there's just barely anything visible. So right around there. And now we're fixing our tone. So again, it's just one of those things you, you probably never would have found out because it's it's something that developers have to have that ballet. They don't want to overwhelm you with all of these different checkboxes and options. So here, if you know how to do it, at the very least now you can incorporate it into your workflow and it makes editing your photos that much more powerful because I really don't know of any other app on mobile that allows you to get that view, show you that mask where you are clipping your shadows or blowing out your highlights. So to me, that's awesome. All right, let's move on to our next tip. This is similar in terms of pressing and holding the option key, for example, or the alt key and dragging, except instead of working on tone, we're gonna to work on sharpening. So here, let's go to uh, close down light and we'll go to detail, which is where the sharpening slider is. So usually the way that I like to work with sharpening is I want to zoom in on an area of the image, ideally, you know, on a one-to-one -one or a 100% view so that I actually see the actual pixel data. Here, I'm just gonna zoom in right here. I know that this uh, log over here should be sharp. And just like with the tone sliders, if I put my finger on sharpening and then I press on the screen while dragging, you'll see the screen turn grayscale. The image actually turns grayscale. Now, it's important to note that it'll only do that when you stop moving. Once I start moving the slider, it'll return to color. But when I stop, and I'm holding on the slider and my other finger is on the screen, it'll go grayscale. And the reason why I want grayscale is because grayscale makes it a lot easier to visualize the sharpening effect on the photo. Whereas if you have color, it's a lot more distracting. So here I can see when I start to kind of teeter towards over sharpening and I'm good there. If I zoom out, now what I wanna make sure of, you can see throughout the image that uh, there's a bunch of smooth areas. You don't typically want to sharpen smooth areas. That makes no sense. So there is a masking slider just like on the desktop Lightroom apps. Here, same thing. If I press and hold on the masking slider, I press and hold on the image and I drag, I get the same mask. So here what I want to do is I want to get to the point where everything that's smooth is black and effectively black is going to hide that sharpening. It's going to remove the sharpening from anywhere that's black and I just want to get to a point where outlines are visible in white. So there, that's good. And now I've been able to really dial in my sharpening, the actual amount, because I'm able to invoke a gray mask or a gray view on my image, and also mask out that sharpening using a very effective and clear masking view. All right, now let's move on to healing. So healing, there is a healing brush and it's quite powerful. Um, it's also hit or miss. Now, what's not very obvious is, let's say you make a selection to heal and you don't like it. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and increase the size and you can see the uh, the preview right here in the middle. So I'm just gonna make it kind of large and the feather is good and the opacity is good. So I'm just gonna use my finger and I'm going to make a selection right here and I'm gonna remove that piece of the branch below the water. So you can kind of move the, the area where Lightroom is going to source the pixels from, and that's fine. But let's say you actually want to get rid of this selection. It's not really easy. There's nowhere here that shows how to do that. You can switch between healing and cloning with that dropdown, but there's no delete. So if you press and hold on the mask here, a pop-up window will come up. And as you can see, you, you have the option here to switch between healing and cloning. Healing uses kind of a content aware algorithm. Cloning will actually take a pixel for pixel copy of the the source where you're actually sourcing the pixels from and overwrite it. Um, but what you can do is hit delete and reset healing brush. So if you click on reset healing brush, it removes everything. But if I go ahead here and I make another selection uh, and I press and hold, let's say I don't want that one here, 
I can hit delete and it'll remove it. So that's more of deleting on an individual, uh, you know, selection by selection basis. And again, it's one of those discoverability things. If you don't know to do that, then, you know, what do you do? All right, so let's move on to the last one. So again, I mentioned how I use Lightroom Mobile to edit a lot of my photos, and I use a very simple rating system. When I finish working on a photo and it's ready to share, I give it four stars, straightforward. And I also move it to a, a collection that I have or a, an album as Lightroom Mobile calls it. So you might notice here, we can go to the star system and on the bottom, we have the stars. So the problem is that at least on iPad, sometimes on the iPhone, it can be kind of tough to tap on that, especially if you're kind of, you know, you're not in a good position or whatever. So you can actually slide your finger up and down on the screen. So on the left side, if I swipe up on the left hand, I can get the stars. So I mentioned that I use four stars. There you go. If you're someone who uses the pick flag, so either the pick or the reject, on the right side, you can switch to pick, no flag, or reject. And it just kind of makes it easier. So just one of those gestures that sometimes if I believe that the first time you go to this screen on Lightroom Mobile, you, there's a little tooltip or a wizard that tells you about it. But if it's something where, you know, you just kind of dismiss it and you forget about it, it could be a handy thing. So this, consider it a reminder of sorts. I love it, I use it all the time. You know, I'll start at zero and I'll just bring it up to four. And then I will go uh, here, then go to organize, add to, and I'll go to my root and I will put it here in my to share album. And that syncs across all my devices. So if I edit on my iPad, but then, you know, an hour later, I want to share it from my iPhone. It's there ready to go with all the same edits. All right. So those are some of my favorite hidden tools and tricks in Lightroom Mobile for iOS. Again, your iPad and your iPhone. Let me know if you found this helpful. Let me know if you've got your own kind of hidden stuff for this application for Lightroom that I don't know about. Leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and be sure to hit subscribe and that bell icon so you get notified for all of my new videos. All right, everyone, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot.